George Pell, Wikipedia Audio George Pell AC is an Australian prelate of the Catholic Church. He became the inaugural prefect of the Secretariat for the Economy in 2014. He previously served as the 8th Archbishop of Sydney, Auxiliary Bishop of Melbourne, and Archbishop of Melbourne. He was created a Cardinal in 2003. Ordained in 1966, he has also been an author, columnist, public speaker, and sportsman, having been signed by the Richmond Football Club, an Australian rules football team, in 1959. Since becoming Archbishop of Melbourne in 1996, he has maintained a high public profile on a wide range of issues, while retaining a strict adherence to Catholic orthodoxy. Pell studied in Rome, Oxford, and at Monash University and has been a visiting scholar at Oxford and at Cambridge. He worked as a priest in regional Victoria and in Melbourne and has since worked widely in education, in seminaries, and the charity sector, chairing the aid organisation Caritas Australia from 1988 to 1997. He has written widely on religious subjects authoring several books and writing a weekly column in Sydney a Euro trademark S Sunday Telegraph. He received a number of international appointments during the papacy of John Paul II, and was brought to Rome by Pope Francis to advise on Vatican City finance and governance issues. He was appointed as a delegate to the Australian Constitutional Convention in 1998, received the Centenary Medal from the Australian Government in 2003, and was appointed a Companion of the Order of Australia in 2005. Upon becoming Archbishop of Melbourne, Pell set up the Melbourne Response Diocesan Protocol to investigate and deal with complaints of sexual abuse in the Archdiocese of Melbourne. The protocol was the first of its kind in the world but has been subject to a variety of criticisms. Australia's wide-ranging 2013A Euro 2017 Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse called Pell three times to give evidence about the Melbourne response, handling of abuse in the Ballarat and Melbourne dioceses, and Case Study 8 regarding the John Ellis complaint. Pell was also called to testify at a 2013 Victorian government inquiry. Amid anger at the church's handling of abuse claims, Pell's appearances were subject to criticism and controversy. These inquiries discredited a number of widely reported claims against Pell regarding his purported knowledge of events as a young priest but also criticized some aspects of the procedures he later established for handling abuse claims. Pell himself used the platforms to both condemn past failings of his church and to defend his own efforts to combat child abuse in the church and care for victims. Early Life and Education On June 29, 2017, Pell was charged with multiple historical sexual assault offences and responded by stating he denies all charges. The Pope granted him leave to return to Australia to defend himself. On July 26, 2017, he appeared in the Magistrates Court of Victoria and entered a plea of not guilty. On October 6, 2017, at his second court appearance, the court set a date for his committal hearing to commence on March 5, 2018 which is expected to last four weeks. The Cardinal, the third most senior official in the Vatican, is the most senior Catholic cleric in the world to face such charges. Pell was born in Ballarat, Victoria, to George Arthur and Margaret Lillian Pell. His father, a non-practicing Anglican whose ancestors were from Leicestershire in England, was a heavyweight boxing champion, his mother was a devout Catholic of Irish descent. During World War II, 
his father served in the Australian Defence Force. His sister, Margaret, became a violinist with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. As a child, he underwent 24 operations to remove an abscess in his throat. Pell, George. Bread, Stones, or Fairy Floss, Religious Education Today. Melbourne, Australian Catholic Truth Society Publications, Pell, George. Are our secondary schools Catholic? Format equals requires URL equals. Melbourne, Australian Catholic Truth Society Publications, Pell, George. An Evaluation of the Goal of Moral Autonomy in the Theory and Practice of Lawrence Kohlberg Format Equals Requires URL Equals Clayton, Melbourne, Monash University, Pell, George, Woods, Mary Helen Issues of Faith and Morals Melbourne, Oxford University Press ISBN 0-19-553978-8 For Senior Secondary Classes and Parish Groups, Pell, George. Catholicism and the Architecture of Freedom The Inaugural Acton Lecture on Religion and Freedom St. Leonard's, Sydney, Centre for Independent Studies P14 ISBN 1-86432-044-3, Pell, George. Livingstone, Tess, ed. Be Not Afraid, Collected Writing. Sydney, Duffy and Snellgrove. ISBN 1-876631-97-X. A Collection of Homilies and Reflections, Pell, George. Casey, M. A., ed. God and Caesar, Selected Essays on Religion, Politics, and Society. Ballin, Victoria, Connor Court. ISBN 978-0-8132-1503-7, Pell, George. Livingstone, Tess, ed. Test everything, hold fast to what is good format equals requires URL equals. Ballin, Victoria, Connor Court. ISBN 978-1-9214-2137-2. Pell received his early education at Laredo Convent and later at St. Patrick's College, where he matriculated. Both schools are in his native Ballarat. At St. Patrick's, Pell played as a ruckman on the first 18 from 1956 to 1959. He even signed to play with the Richmond Football Club. However, his ambitions later turned to the priesthood. Speaking of his decision to become a priest, Pell once said, to put it crudely, I feared and suspected and eventually became convinced that God wanted me to do his work, and I was never able to successfully escape that conviction. In 1960, he began his priestly studies at Corpus Christi College, then located in where I be. One of his fellow seminarians at Corpus Christi was Dennis Hart, Pell's future successor as Archbishop of Melbourne. Pell continued to play football and served as class prefect in his second and third years. In 1963, he was assigned to continue his studies at the Pontifical Urban University in Rome. He was ordained to the diaconate on August 15, 1966. On December 16, 1966, Pell was ordained a priest by Cardinal Gregorio Pietro Agagianian at St. Peter's Basilica. 
he received a licentiate of sacred theology degree from the Pontificia Universita Urbaniana in 1967 and continued his studies at the University of Oxford where he earned a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Church History in 1971 with a thesis entitled The Exercise of Authority in Early Christianity from about 170 to about 270. During his studies at Oxford, he also served as a chaplain to Catholic students at Eton College, where he celebrated the first Roman Catholic Mass since the English Reformation. In 1971, he returned to Australia and was assigned to serve as an assistant priest in Swan Hill, where he remained for two years. He then served at a parish in Ballarat East from 1973 to 1983, becoming administrator of the parish of Bungary in 1984. In 1982, he earned a Master of Education degree from Monash University in Melbourne. During his tenure in Ballarat East and Bungary, he also served as Episcopal Vicar for Education, Director of the Aquinas Campus of the Institute of Catholic Education and Principal of the Institute of Catholic Education. He was also editor of Light, the newspaper of the Diocese of Ballarat, from 1979 to 1984. From 1985 to 1987, Pell served as seminary rector of his alma mater, Corpus Christi College. Pell was appointed an auxiliary bishop of Melbourne and titular bishop of Scala on March 30, 1987. He received his Episcopal consecration on May 21, 1987 from Archbishop Frank Little, with Bishops Ronald Mulcairns and Joseph O'Connell serving as CO consecrators. He served as Bishop for the Southern Region of Melbourne. During this time, he was a parish priest in Mentone. Pell was named 7th Archbishop of Melbourne on July 16, 1996, receiving the pallium from Pope John Paul II on June 29, 1997. He was later appointed 8th Archbishop of Sydney on March 26, 2001 and again received the pallium from John Paul on June 29, 2001. Ecclesiastical Career Pell was a consultor of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace from 1990 to 1995 and a member from 2002. From 1990 to 2000 he was a member of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. In April 2002, John Paul II named him President of the Vox Clara Commission to advise the Congregation for Divine Worship on English translations of liturgical texts. In December 2002 he was appointed a member of the Pontifical Council for the Family, having previously served as a consultor to the Council. On September 22, 2012, Pell was appointed a member of the Congregation for Bishops. Since Pell's appointment as Archbishop of Melbourne he has maintained a high public profile on a wide range of issues, while retaining a strict adherence to Catholic orthodoxy, with some dispute over the issue of Catholics and primacy of conscience. Pell worked cooperatively with his Anglican counterpart in Sydney, Peter Jensen, on political issues while avoiding theological controversies. In defending the importance of religious belief in building a just society, Pell worked with representatives of non-Christian faiths, arguing in 2001 that the most significant religious change in Australia over the past 50 years is the increase of people without religion, now about one-fifth of the population. All monotheists, Christians and Jews, Muslims and Sikhs, must labor to reverse this. We must not allow the situation to deteriorate as it had in Elijah's time, 850 years before Christ, where monotheism was nearly swamped by the aggressive paganism of the followers of Baal.
On September 28, 2003, Pope John Paul II announced that he would appoint Pell and 28 others to the College of Cardinals. In the consistory of October 21 he was created and proclaimed Cardinal Priest of S. Maria Domenica Mazzarello. For the first time ever, from Pell's elevation to the Cardenalate in 2003 until Edward Bede Clancy's 80th birthday on December 13, 2003, there were three Australian cardinal electors, including Clancy and Edward Idris Cassidy, President Emeritus of the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. Pell was one of the electors who participated in the 2005 papal conclave that selected Pope Benedict XVI. It has been speculated that Pell served as a type of campaign manager behind Benedict's election. While there was a little speculation in the Australian media that he had an outside chance of becoming Pope himself, international commentary on the papal succession did not mention Pell as a contender. However, Pell was mentioned as a possible successor to Benedict XVI as head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. This position was given to William Levada, former Archbishop of San Francisco. Pell remains eligible to participate in any future papal conclaves that begin before his 80th birthday on June 8, 2021. In 2006, Pell made a successful bid for Sydney to host the 2008 World Youth Day, one of the largest regular international gatherings of young people in the world, often attracting crowds of millions. The 2008 event brought Benedict XVI on his first papal visit to Australia. We take it for granted that people will always give to the poor and be concerned about social justice. Pell said soon after winning the bid, in remarks which spelled out his pastoral priorities. But this doesn't just happen by itself. Many great civilizations have shown no regard for these values at all and have even considered them weaknesses. Every society requires a goodly percentage of active believers to ensure that the values of a fair go and respect for others are promoted and passed on the next generation. World Youth Day will make a powerful contribution to this vital work. In February 2007, Pell instituted new guidelines for family members speaking at funerals. He said that, on not a few occasions, inappropriate remarks glossing over the deceased's proclivities or about the church have been made at funeral masses. Pell's guidelines make it clear that the eulogy must never replace the celebrant's homily, which should focus on the scripture readings selected, God's compassion, and the resurrection of Jesus. Priesthood Diocesan Episcopal Career On September 18, 2012, Pell was named by Benedict XVI to be one of the papally appointed Synod Fathers for the October 2012 Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops on the New Evangelization. Secretariat for the Economy Health in Later Life Views Theology and Worship Ad Orientum Liturgy Pell was the only cardinal from Oceania to take part in the 2013 papal conclave. Following the election of Pope Francis, Pell was one of eight members appointed to advise the Pope on how to reform the Catholic Church. In February 2014, Pell was appointed to be the first prefect of the newly created Secretariat for the Economy. In this role, Pell is responsible for the annual budget of the Holy See and the Vatican. As a result of his appointment, the See of Sydney fell vacant. In July 2014 it was announced that Pell, with the consent of Pope Francis, 
had the ordinary section of administration of the patrimony of the Apostolic See transferred to the Secretariat for the Economy and claimed that this was an important step to enable the Secretariat for the Economy to exercise its responsibilities of economic control and vigilance over the agencies of the Holy See. It was also announced that remaining staff of APSA would begin to focus exclusively on its role as a treasury for the Holy See and the Vatican City State. Adam and Eve Following the confirmation of the Institute for the Works of Religion's mission by the Pope on April 7, 2014 the IOR announced plans for the next stage of development. The Council of Cardinals the Secretariat for the Economy, the Supervisory Commission of Cardinals and the current IOR Board of Superintendents have agreed that this plan will be carried out by a new executive team led by Jean-Baptiste de France Sou. Pell was appointed a member of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples in September 2014. It was reported in November 2014 that the Secretariat for the Economy has distributed a new handbook to all Vatican offices outlining financial management policies that would go into effect on January 1, 2015. The manual was endorsed by the Council for the Economy and approved by the Pope in forma specifica. The purpose of the manual is very simple, said Pell. It brings financial management practices in line with international standards and will help all entities and administrations of the Holy See and the Vatican City State prepare financial reports in a consistent and transparent manner. The Secretariat for the Economy will provide training and support to the Vatican slash Holy See offices to help implement the new policies. In 2015, Cardinal Francesco Cacco Palmario questioned the scope of the authority given to the Secretariat for the Economy and to Pell himself. These questions involved not the demand for transparency in all financial operations, but the consolidation of management under the Secretariat for the Economy. In February 2010, it was reported that Pell had a heart turn in Rome recently and that he's in hospital there or has been in hospital there. It is thought Pell was taken to hospital when he first arrived in Rome after he collapsed due to ill health and exhaustion. He was released from hospital the same day and sources close to Pell said he had been in good health since. Pell's heart condition was again in the news in late 2015 when it was judged serious enough to prevent air travel from Italy to Australia to appear before the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse. He was expected to be well enough to travel in February 2016. However, in the end he testified from a hotel in Rome through a video link-up. Ballarat-based state MP Sharon Knight said, after hearing that Pell would not return to Australia to appear before the Commission due to an undisclosed heart condition by saying if we do ever see you back in this country, then we will know that everything you have said about your health a euro everything that you have said to avoid personally appearing at the hearings a euro is an absolute sham a euro. In the Australian context, Pell is regarded as progressive on many social issues but a conservative on matters of faith and morals. He has often been wary of what he calls the callousness of unrestrained capitalism. He has written that a Catholic is someone who is not only a person of personal conscience but is someone who believes Christ is Son of God, accepts his teachings and lives a life of worship, service, and duty in the community. Catholics are not created by the accident of birth to remain only because their tribe has an interesting history. Heaven and Hell Pell supports, in the abstract but not as a proposal for immediate application, mandatory celebration of the Canon of the Mass with the orientation of the priest ad orientum, facing in the same direction as the congregation. 
there's nothing like a consensus in favor of that at the moment, he said. I think I would be in favor of it because it makes it patently clear that the priest is not the center of the show, that this is an act of worship of the one true God, and the people are joining with the priest for that. During a debate against Richard Dawkins on the show Q&A in 2012, in response to whether there had ever been a Garden of Eden scenario with an actual Adam and Eve, Pell said. Ordination of Women and Priestly Celibacy Adam and Eve are terms a euro what do they mean, life and earth. Eat a euro trademark s like every man. Theta euro trademark s a beautiful, sophisticated, mythological account. Eat a euro trademark s not science but eat a euro trademark s there to tell us two or three things. First of all that God created the world and the universe. Secondly, that the key to the whole of universe, the really significant thing, are humans and, thirdly, it is a very sophisticated mythology to try to explain the evil and suffering in the world. Asked to describe his concept of heaven for Australian television in 2012, Pell said. Society of St. Pius X Pope Benedict XVI Political Issues In some sense we will be there as continuing persons. In some with a new heaven and a new earth with all the good things that we've done will be incorporated into the new heaven and new earth. How it will work out I don't know because, I think, Physically and morally and intellectually we're at our peak at different stages in our life. How it will work out I've got no idea but that is the general outline of Christian teaching. Asked about the subject of hell, Pell said that he used the example of Hitler to explain the notion of a need for hell. You think Hitler might be in hell? Started the Second World War caused the death of 50 million or would you prefer a system where Hitler got away with it for free? We Catholics generally believe that there is a hell. I hope nobody is there. I certainly believe in a place of purification. I think it will be like getting up in the morning and you throw the curtains back and the light is just too much. God's light would be too much for us. But I believe on behalf of the innocent victims in history that the scales of justice should work out. And if they don't, life is radically unjust, the law of the jungle prevails. Pell supported Pope John Paul II's view that the ordination of women as priests is impossible according to the Church's divine constitution and has also expressed his opinion that abandoning the tradition of clerical celibacy would be a serious blunder. Pell has expressed agreement with the lifting of the excommunication of the four bishops of the traditionalist Catholic Society of St. Pius X. He has said I think it is certainly a worthy goal to try to reconcile that wing of the Church, but also insisted that the SSPX must accept the teachings of the Second Vatican Council before it can be fully reconciled with the Holy See, saying, I think it would be quite incongruous wanting to be formally reconciled with the Church if you are explicitly disavowing key elements of Vatican II among which he mentioned the teaching that the state cannot coerce belief and the councils. Condemnation of Antisemitism Pell commented publicly that the decision of Pope Benedict XVI to retire in 2013 could set a precedent which may be a problem for future leaders. He said Benedict's decision to step down had destabilized the church and some of those surrounding the Pope had failed to support him in his ministry. He was well aware that this is a break with tradition slightly destabilizing, Pell said. According to him, the Pope was a better theologian than he was a leader. In response to the claim that he had criticized Benedict XVI, Pell confirmed he was stating what the Pope already mentioned himself, and his comments were not breaking any ground.
During a youth conference in Parramatta, Bishop Anthony Fisher confirmed that Pell was merely stating the pros and cons of the Pope's decision and those who claimed his comments were critical were taking him out of context. Pell has written that he supported the Afghanistan war but believed that the Iraq war was not morally justified. Pell has criticised the bipartisan policy of mandatory detention of asylum seekers in Australia and called for empathy and compassion towards displaced peoples. Pell said that while a policy of deterrence was justifiable, the practice of the policy was coming at too great a moral cost. Describing conditions in some of Australia's mandatory detention camps in 2001 as pretty tight and miserable and no place for women and children, Pell called for investigation of any maltreatment of detainees and said that, while Australia has the right to regulate the number of refugees it accepts, as a rich and prosperous country, it can afford to be generous and must treat humanely those refugees who reach Australia. Pell was appointed a delegate to the Australian Constitutional Convention 1998 which considered the issue of Australia becoming a republic. Pell supported change, and called on Australia's political leaders to embrace the republic noting without support from most of the front benches of both sides of the parliament, it would be wasteful to go to a referendum. Towards the end of proceedings, he called on conservatives to support change. Pell believes Western countries should not intervene in the Syrian civil war as Bashar al-Assad provides basic law and order for the population and basic protection for the Christians. When John Howard departed the office of Prime Minister of Australia following the 2007 Australian federal election, Pell wrote that, along with Bob Hawke, Howard had been the outstanding figure of Australian life since Robert Menzies and that he had brought 11 years of prosperity and changed Australian life for the better. Pell wrote that Howard understood that traditional families are the cement which hold society together and he was generally supportive of Christian values. Pell said that Howard went a step too far on industrial relations policy and that the Iraq war did not go well, but that the biggest blot on his record will remain the treatment of the refugees. Pell describes himself as an old Kennedy groupie a Euro referring to John F. Kennedy, the first Catholic president of the United States. Following the 2008 election of Barack Obama as U.S. president, Pell wrote for the Sunday Telegraph that Obama is a superb orator with a gift for language and a capacity to inspire loyalty and hope and that the importance of a black president for the USA and the world cannot be underestimated, especially a black president with a Muslim father. No country in Europe could produce such a result. Pell expressed a need for universal health care in the United States but criticised Obama's support for abortion, saying that he had the most anti-life voting record of any contemporary senator which, Pell wrote, contrasts strongly with his humanitarianism in many other areas. Pell said that Obama would have to move beyond the radical left if he wanted to win over the middle ground in the fight for healing and prosperity. In a 2009 interview with the Catholic Herald, Pell said of Obama, his record on life issues is very, very bad indeed and expressed his opposition to the Freedom of Choice Act. When the Australian Labour Party replaced Kevin Rudd as its leader in 2010 and Julia Gillard became the Prime Minister of Australia, Pell wrote that as leaders Rudd and opposition leader Tony Abbott are historically unusual by Australian standards because both worship regularly and have publicly acknowledged the huge Christian contribution to Australia. The rise and fall of Kevin Rudd has no parallel nationally. While he talked himself out of his job with his inflated rhetoric, he had many virtues and Australia avoided recession. 
John Howard was voted out by the Australian public, Rudd's departure will leave a nasty taste in many mouths. Pell aroused criticism from Senator Christine Milne of the Greens political party with the following comment in his 2006 Legatus Summit speech. Some of the hysteric and extreme claims about global warming are also a symptom of pagan emptiness, of Western fear when confronted by the immense and basically uncontrollable forces of nature. Belief in a benign God who is master of the universe has a steadying psychological effect, although it is no guarantee of utopia, no guarantee that the continuing climate and geographic changes will be benign. In the past pagans sacrificed animals and even humans in vain attempts to placate capricious and cruel gods. Today they demand a reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. In a 2007 article for the Sydney Sunday Telegraph, Pell wrote that while climate had changed, he was certainly sceptical about extravagant claims of impending man-made climatic catastrophes, because the evidence is insufficient. Responding to the Anglican bishop and environmentalist George Browning, who told the Anglican Church of Australia's General Synod that Pell was out of touch with the Catholic Church as well as with the general community, Pell stated. Radical environmentalists are more than up to the task of moralising their own agenda and imposing it on people through fear. They don't need church leaders to help them with this, although it is a very effective way of further muting Christian witness. Church leaders in particular should be allergic to nonsense. I am certainly skeptical about extravagant claims of impending man-made climatic catastrophes. Uncertainties on climate change abound. My task as a Christian leader is to engage with reality, to contribute to debate on important issues, to open people's minds, and to point out when the emperor is wearing few or no clothes. Pell has criticized Pope Francis for the encyclical Laudato Si. Pell has written of a need to deepen friendship and understanding with Muslims in the post-Euro September 11th environment and has said that though there is a continuing struggle throughout the Muslim world between moderates and men of violence, he believes that, in Australia, the moderates are in control. In 2004, Speaking to the Acton Institute on the problems of secular democracy, Pell drew a parallel between Islam and communism. Islam may provide in the 21st century, the attraction that communism provided in the 20th, both for those that are alienated and embittered on the one hand and for those who seek order or justice on the other. In 2006, at the Legatus Summit in Naples, Florida, Pell stated, considered strictly on its own terms, Islam is not a tolerant religion and its capacity for far-reaching renovation is severely limited. However, he added that the human factor of many Muslims being uncomfortable with the violence and harsh intolerance of traditional Islamic practices provides hope for positive change as has occurred in more moderate Muslim nations. He continued by denouncing the blithe encouragement of large-scale Islamic migration into Western nations and saying it had a detrimental impact on economic and cultural development at certain times and in certain places. In 2012 and 2013, Pell hosted Iftar dinners to mark the end of the Islamic celebration of Ramadan. The Grand Mufti of Australia Ibrahim Abu Muhammad, expressed his gratitude and appreciation to Pell on behalf of Muslims for hosting the dinner. Pell said during the 2012 dinner that such gatherings are one of the fruits of tolerance that flourishes in Australian society and is a sign of respect for diversity, stating, we are all called to be instruments of peace and harmony among aggressors and those who practice terrorism although we worship the one God in different ways. We gather united in our plans for respect and friendship.
Chappelle has participated in many interfaith dialogues and celebrations involving Jewish people. In 2001, he told one such audience at Mandelbaum House that he had come from a strongly pro-Jewish family and of being saddened during his studies of history to find Christian ill-treatment of Jews. Pell spoke of the need to remember the Holocaust and of his visits to concentration camps and of his support for the right of the State of Israel to exist. He praised the role of Vatican II and of Pope John Paul II in advancing the cause of Christian-Jewish dialogue and cooperation. Pell also spoke in praise of the Jewish Psalms as a body of prayerful literature unequaled in any other tradition and singled out the Jewish prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel as authors for whom he has a deep love and Elijah as one whom he views as highly significant. Pell called on Christian and Jewish leaders alike to speak together and respectfully listen to each other, saying of the Christian-Jewish relationship. During the last 30 or 40 years there has been a significant reduction in the amount of Christian anti-Semitism. We thank God for that. To adapt to our circumstances the word of Martin Luther King we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Our fortunes, as brothers, are inextricably linked. During a 2012 televised panel discussion including himself and Richard Dawkins on the Australian TV program Q&A, Pell stated that he had a great admiration for the Jews and repeatedly condemned Adolf Hitler. During the course of the discussion, ABC moderator Tony Jones sought to imply anti-Semitism in Pell's remarks regarding the relative intellectual development of ancient Jewish society with that of great powers like Egypt, as well as in Pell's comment that Germany was punished for its role in the Second World War. In responding to a series of questions by Jones as to why God would randomly decide to provide proof of his existence to a small group of Jews 2,000 years ago, Pell said that, while the intellectual life of the ancient Jews was not the equal of the surrounding great powers like Egypt, Persia, and Chaldea, Jesus came not as a philosopher to the elite. He came to the poor and the battlers. Jones Cross examined Pell over his use of the word intellectual and Pell said that the little Jewish people, they were originally shepherds. They were stuck. They're still stuck between these great powers. Referring to the Holocaust, to genocide, to famine, Jones asked why an omnipotent God would permit such events to occur. In response, Pell and Jones had the following exchange. Pell's remarks were widely misreported and misinterpreted, leading to a clarification from his office a euro reported by the Times of Israel as an apology. Pell said, My commitment to friendship with the Jewish community, and my esteem for the Jewish faith is a matter of public record, and the last thing I would want to do is give offense to either and that the Holocaust was a crime unique in history for the death and suffering it caused and its diabolical attempt to wipe out an entire people. Pell has received much attention for his attitudes to sexuality issues, particularly homosexuality. He has said that Christian teaching on sexuality is only one part of the Ten Commandments, of the virtues and vices, but it is essential for human well-being and especially for the proper flourishing of marriages and families, for the continuity of the human race. Upon becoming Archbishop of Sydney, he stated, any genuine religion has two important moral tasks, firstly, to present norms and ideals, goals for our striving, and secondly, to offer aids for our weakness, forgiveness, and healing for every wrongdoer and sinner who repents and seeks forgiveness. Pell says that, outside exceptional circumstances such as relationships involving physical abuse, it is better for individuals and for society if couples do not divorce, 
particularly where children are involved. In 2001, ABC Radio's The World Today reported that Pell wanted a return to a divorce system based on the fault of one spouse. Pell told the program that, in an effort to focus attention on the damage, personal and financial, that unfortunately often follows from divorce he had prepared a list for public consideration of possible penalties to discourage divorce, as well as benefits to support couples who stayed together. In 2009, Pell supported the comments made by Pope Benedict XVI in Africa in relation to controlling the spread of AIDS, in which the Pope reiterated the Catholic teaching that the solution to the AIDS epidemic lay not in the distribution of condoms, but in the practice of sexual abstinence and monogamy within marriage. The Pope said that AIDS could not be overcome through the distribution of condoms, which can even increase the problem. In response to global coverage of these remarks, Pell said that AIDS was great spiritual and health crisis and a huge challenge, but that condoms are encouraging promiscuity. They are encouraging irresponsibility. Afghanistan and Iraq Wars The idea that you can solve a great spiritual and health crisis like AIDS with a few mechanical contraptions like condoms is ridiculous. If you look at the Philippines you'll see the incidence of AIDS is much lower than it is in Thailand, which is awash with condoms. There are condoms everywhere and the rate of infection is enormous. The president of the AIDS Council of NSW, Mark Orr, said Pell's comments were irresponsible and contradicted all evidence that condoms reduced the transmission of HIV. Mike Toole and Rob Moody wrote in The Age that Pell had said a health worker from an African country told him that people in remote areas are too poor to afford condoms and the ones that are available are often of very poor quality and weren't used effectively. Both professors argue that this is not an argument against promoting condoms a euro it is an argument that we need to ensure that good quality condoms are affordable for everyone and are widely distributed with information about how to use them effectively and concluded the sexual abstinence message is clearly not working. In 2010, in light of the world, the Pope, the Church and the Signs of the Times, a book-length interview by German journalist Peter Seewald, Benedict said that while the Church did not consider condoms as a real or moral solution, there were times where the intention of reducing the risk of infection made condom use a first step towards a better way. Pell released a statement saying this did not signal a major new shift in Vatican thinking. As Archbishop of Sydney, Pell supported the work of Catholic health organizations such as St. Vincent's Hospital and the Tree of Hope Center in caring for those living with HIV-AIDS. Pell supports research on the therapeutic potential of adult stem cells but opposes embryonic stem cell research on the basis that the Church cannot support anything which involves the destruction of human life at any stage after conception. Under Pell, the Sydney Archdiocese has provided funding for adult stem cell research but has actively opposed moves by the Parliament of New South Wales to liberalise laws pertaining to use of embryonic stem cells. Asylum Seekers and Refugees In remarks made at a media conference, in June 2007 on a conscience vote overturning the state ban on therapeutic cloning, Pell said that Catholic politicians who vote for this legislation must realize that their voting has consequences for their place in the life of the Church. Some members of Parliament, including ministers such as Christina Keneally and Nathan Rees, condemned Pell's comments, calling them hypocritical. Rees drew comparisons with comments made earlier in the year by Sheikh Halali. Australian Greens MLC Lee Rhiannon referred Pell's remarks to the New South Wales Parliamentary Privileges Committee for allegedly being in contempt of Parliament. 
Powell described this move as a clumsy attempt to curb religious freedom and freedom of speech. In September the committee tabled a report clearing him of this charge and recommending that no further action be taken. The legal scholar and theologian Kathleen Caveney wrote that in every possible respect, Pell's statement backfired as, following backlash from elected officials and the general public, the bill passed the lower house with what she describes as an overwhelming 6-5 a euro 26 vote and passed the upper house with a 2-7 a euro 13 vote. Australian Republicanism the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Sydney takes the role of visitor of St. John's College, a residential college within the University of Sydney. This is a largely ceremonial role but he can also be called upon to give guidance and resolve internal disputes. Under the direction of the Archbishop the college associates itself with the interests of the Church and its mission particularly by the fostering of appropriate academic directions in education, charity, social justice, ethics, and the environment. Pell accepted the invitation to be patron of the Oxford University Newman Society and to deliver their inaugural St. Thomas More Lecture on March 6, 2009. Syrian Civil War World Leaders Pell is a regular contributor of articles for the Australian media, including regular columns for Sydney's The Sunday Telegraph newspaper. Pell is a former fellow of the Australian College of Education. Pell's tenure as Archbishop of Melbourne began when the issue of handling of child sex abuse allegations by institutions was coming to the fore in public debate. Launching his pioneering Melbourne Response Protocol in 1996, Pell said, It's a matter of regret that the Catholic Church has taken some time to come to grips with the sex abuse issue adequately. In his final sermon as Archbishop of Sydney in 2014 before departing Australia for Rome, Pell told the congregation I apologize once again to the victims and their families for the terrible suffering that has been brought to bear by these crimes. He said procedural improvements could still be made to the church's efforts against abuse, and then he added that he looked forward to the findings of the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse which he said was providing a public service in allowing victims to air their experiences. His choice of words drew wide criticism as they were perceived as being inappropriately blithe and unempathetic to the victims of the abuse. John Howard John F. Kennedy Barack Obama Kevin Rudd Environmental concerns Interfaith issues Islam Judaism Sexuality, marriage, and bioethics Divorce HIV-AIDS Stem cell research Other roles Sexual abuse by clergy and members of religious orders. Melbourne Response 2013 Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry After being installed as Archbishop of Melbourne in August 1996, Pell announced the establishment of the Melbourne Response Protocol in October of that year. Victims were publicly encouraged to come forward. When Pell was appointed a cardinal in 2003, the ABC noted that he had established Australia a Euro trademark's first independent commissioner to handle sexual abuse complaints against clergy. In 2017, it reported that the Melbourne response was widely criticised as being legalistic and offering inadequate support to victims. After his elevation to the Archiepiscopacy in 1996, Pell discussed the issue of child abuse with the Victorian Premier, Governor and retired Judge Richard McGarvey, 
who all recommended swift action. Pell preempted the National Church response, known as Towards Healing which the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference approved in November, and which began operating in March. He engaged the law firm course to draft a scheme which would be funded by but operate independently of the Archdiocese of Melbourne. A public forum was held on October 19, and the Melbourne response was announced on October 30, 1996. The Melbourne response was the subject of Case Study 16 in the 2013A Euro 2017 Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse and was also examined in the 2013 Victorian Government Inquiry into the Handling of Child Abuse by Religious and Other Organisations. Pell was called to testify at both inquiries. According to the Royal Commission, the Melbourne response set its goals as truth, humility, healing for the victims, assistance to other persons affected, an adequate response to those accused and to offenders and the prevention of any such offences in the future. Its key features were the appointment of independent commissioners to inquire into allegations and make recommendations, a counselling and support service and the establishment of a compensation panel to advise on making ex gratia payments to victims of abuse. The ex gratia payments are made without the church recognizing any liability to victims and were initially capped at $50,000. It was increased to $55,000 in 2000 and to $75,000 in 2008. Peter O'Callaghan was appointed the first independent commissioner. He went on to investigate 351 complaints of child abuse, and upheld 97% of those. On May 27, 2013, Pell gave evidence before Victoria's Parliamentary Inquiry into the handling of child abuse by religious and other organizations. Pell told the inquiry he was fully apologetic and absolutely sorry. The parliamentarians questioned Pell over allegations from the parents of a victim that he had not shown them empathy. Pell said he had in fact fully understood the suffering. Pell agreed with the inquiry that his predecessor had covered up matters for fear of scandal. The cardinal was heckled from the gallery. Pell critic David Marr wrote that he admitted his church had covered up abuse for fear of scandal, that his predecessor Archbishop Little had destroyed records, moved pedophile priests from parish to parish and facilitated appalling crimes. During the course of the inquiry, a victim of a pedophile Christian brother at St. Olypius Primary School claimed that in 1969 Pell heard him pleading for help a few weeks after he had been raped. Pell denied the claim, which was later discredited when Pell produced his passport to confirm that he was not living in Australia that year. In 2015, the complainant's story received wide publicity prior to Pell producing his passport. During Pell's time as Archbishop of Sydney, allegations of sexual abuse were made against around 55 priests in the Archdiocese. These were almost exclusively relating to incidents that occurred prior to his arrival as Archbishop. The allegations resulted in just under $8 million in reparation payments. Response to Historic Allegations in Sydney In late 2012, the Australian federal government announced the establishment of a royal commission into institutional responses to child sexual abuse. The Royal Commission hearings were conducted between 2013 and 2017. Pell gave evidence on three occasions to the Royal Commission beginning in March 2014 in Sydney and via video link from the Vatican in August 2014 and in February-March 2016. In a televised media conference after the announcement of the Royal Commission in 2012, 
Pell welcomed the inquiry and said we think this is an opportunity to help the victims, it's an opportunity to clear the air and separate fact from fiction. He said there had been a persistent press campaign against the Catholic Church. At this conference he also made comments about upholding the seal of the confessional which received negative press. Pell used his 2012 Christmas address as Archbishop of Sydney to express his shock and shame at revelations of crime and wrongdoing by Christians, which he called disasters, completely contrary to Christ's teaching. He said he was deeply sorry this has happened and told his listeners to help those who have been hurt. Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse The announcement of the Royal Commission was accompanied by calls from some quarters for the relaxing of the requirement of confidentiality in confessions, which has been upheld by the Catholic Church since the 5th century and is protected under Australian law in such statutes as the Evidence Act 1995. At his press conference regarding the announcement of the Royal Commission, Pell was asked whether he thought that priests who hear confessions from people who commit child sex abuse must remain bound by the seal of confession. Pell replied, If that is done outside the confessional, the seal of confession is inviolable. If the priest knows beforehand about such a situation, the priest should refuse to hear the confession. That would be my advice, and I would never hear the confession of a priest who is suspected of such a thing. Comments Upholding the Seal of Confession The ABC reported that the comment met with disapproval, citing Catholic politician Barry O'Farrell, who told Parliament that confessions should not be secret. A number of criticisms of Pell's conduct and manner towards victims and perpetrators have been aired in the Australian media and considered at the Royal Commission. His appearances before the Royal Commission were met with intense public interest in Australia. He was heckled from the public galleries and the musician Tim Minchin called him scum and a coward in a song released on Network 10's The Project. Pell has complained of unfair treatment from the media and relentless character assassination. Pell's Conduct An SBS article by Debbie Marshall included suggestions Pell had ignored accounts of physical and sexual abuse and covered up such abuse. Marshall raised the allegation that Pell had attempted to bribe a victim. However, Pell was cross-examined by counsel assisting Gail Furness over the widely publicized claim that in 1993, he attempted to bribe David Ridsdale into silence, when David Ridsdale called him about the historical misconduct of his pedophile priest uncle Gerald Ridsdale. In her final submission, Furness conceded that the allegation was unlikely to be an accurate interpretation of Pell's intent, as it was already known that Gerald Ridsdale was under investigation by police, and David Ridsdale was requesting a private process and not suggesting he wanted to go to police. The Royal Commission also considered evidence of Pell's knowledge of rumors, allegations, or complaints of Dowland's sexual abuse of children in Ballarat, also raised in Marshall's article. One witness said he'd gone to Pell's presbytery in Ballarat to warn him about Dowlin. Pell submitted evidence that he did not live in Ballarat or in that presbytery at the time and the council assisting noted in her final submission that Cardinal Pell's evidence about his living arrangements and duties in 1973 and 1974 make it less likely that he was at St. Patrick's Presbytery late in the afternoon on a weekday. In 2014, the Royal Commission was told how lawyers representing Pell and the Archdiocese of Sydney incurred costs of $1.5 million against a victim of sexual abuse. The lawyers, acting on the Church's instructions, 
vigorously fought John Ellis through the courts despite warnings of his fragile psychological state. The resulting NSW Court of Appeal ruling established the controversial Ellis defense, which confirmed that the church could not be sued as a legal entity and held liable for abuse committed by a priest in such matters. Eventually, Ellis received $568,000 from the church. In a statement to the Royal Commission in March 2014, Pell reversed his earlier stance in support of the defence, saying, My own view is that the church in Australia should be able to be sued in cases of this kind. In his 2014 appearance, Pell likened the Catholic Church to a trucking company, if the truck driver picks up some lady and then molests her, I don't think it's appropriate, because it is contrary to the policy, for the ownership, the leadership of that company to be held responsible. He was widely criticized for this remark. The president of adults surviving child abuse, Kathy Kazelman, called his comments outrageous, saying that they denied the experience of victims. Nikki Davis from the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests, said that Pell had made a highly offensive comparison. Michael Bradley, writing in his weekly column for ABC News, said yes, it was mind-blowingly insensitive to draw that analogy and to so blithely refer to some lady. But there was a much bigger hole. In the world according to Pell, if the Catholic Church has a policy that tells its priests not to rape children then, if they still do so, the Church cannot be held accountable. March 2014 Appearance Appearing before the Royal Commission in February and March 2016 by video link from a hotel in Rome unable to travel to Australia due to his heart condition, Pell gave evidence in front of 15 victims of abuse who had travelled from Australia to Rome to witness his testimony. The hearing in Sydney was open to the media. Having sworn on the Bible, Pell stated that he did not think the problems with abuse were with the institutional structure of the Catholic Church. The Church has made enormous mistakes and is working to remedy those, he said. The church in many places, certainly in Australia, has mucked things up, has let people down. I'm not here to defend the indefensible. Council assisting the Royal Commission alleged that there were also wider problems with the church's hierarchy in Australia and Rome and beyond, which they thought he understated or sidestepped. Regarding the allegations of children, he said that the predisposition was not to believe and that the instinct was to protect the church. He continued, saying, too many of them certainly were dismissed and sometimes they were dismissed in absolutely scandalous circumstances. They were very, very, very plausible allegations made by responsible people that were not followed up sufficiently. Pell also stated that the way Gerald Ridsdale was dealt with was a catastrophe for the victims and a catastrophe for the church. But referring to rumors of abuse per se, in those days, he said, if a priest denied such activity, I was very strongly inclined to accept the denial. 2016 Appearance Following Pell's inability to travel in 2016, a GoFundMe campaign entitled Send Ballarat Survivors to Rome was launched to enable 15 victims of abuse to travel to Rome and see him give evidence in person. It reached its target of $1.55,000 in one day, doubled that the following day and trebled it the day after. The musician Tim Minchin released the song Come Home with all proceeds to go to the GoFundMe campaign. The song attacked Pell as scum and coward who should go to hell. Uploaded to YouTube, 
within 24 hours it had over 400,000 views and reached the number one position on the iTunes song chart in Australia. Gerald Ridsdale in June 2016 the Holy See Press Office Director Federico Lombardi announced that Pell would continue in his role as Prefect of the Secretariat for the Economy, despite being obliged to submit his resignation on turning 75. Lombardi reminded reporters that Pope Francis had previously expressed his full confidence in Pell, and that Francis wished him to continue as Prefect. Accusations and Charges Regarding Sexual Abuse Pell served as an assistant priest at St. Olypius Church in Ballarat East End, in 1973, shared a house with Gerald Ridsdale, a priest who was later defrocked and jailed for child sex crimes. Ridsdale was convicted between 1993 and 2017 of a very large number of child sexual abuse and indecent assault charges against children aged as young as four years during the 1970s and 1980s, the total number of known victims standing at 79, but that is thought to be a small proportion of his victims. Pell was part of a leadership group of Catholic priests in the Diocese of Ballarat that met during 1982 and discussed moving Ridsdale from the parish at Mortlake and sending him to Sydney. Pell denied knowing about any of Ridsdale's actions. Journalist and former priest Paul Bongiorno, who also lived in a presbytery with Ridsdale told ABC Radio that Ridsdale concealed his activities, they hide it. It was certainly hidden from me. And when it came out, after I a Euro trademark D left the priesthood, I was shocked and I was ashamed. Writings Distinctions Orders Awards In March 2016, when asked by the Royal Commission why he had agreed to walk Ridsdale into the courthouse in Melbourne during his 1993 criminal trial, Pell responded, A Euroe I had some status as an auxiliary bishop and I was asked to appear with the ambition that this would lessen the term of punishment, lessen his time in jail A Euro Peter Saunders, the victim's advocate and a former Catholic priest, said that this Pell response A Euroe, demonstrates once again the callousness, the cold-heartedness and the contempt that George Pell appears to display for this whole issue and particularly for the victims of these dreadful crimes a Euro. Other Pell was accused by David Ridsdale, a victim of child sex abuse in Ballarat and the nephew of Gerald Ridsdale of attempting to bribe him in 1993 in order to prevent the abuse being made public. This allegation was first aired in 2002 on the 60 Minutes television program. Tim Minchin's anti-Pell song Come Home repeated the inference. The allegation was examined at the Royal Commission and received further wide publicity. However, Council assisting Gail Furness conceded in her final submission to the Royal Commission that, given it was already known to Pell that Gerald Ridsdale was subject to police investigation, and David Ridsdale had requested a private rather than police process it is not likely that Bishop Pell would then have thought it necessary to offer Mr. Ridsdale an inducement to prevent him from going to the police or public with his allegations and Ridsdale could have misinterpreted Bishop Pella Euro trademark s offer of assistance. Notes Bibliography In June 2002, Pell was accused of having sexually abused a 12-year-old boy at a Roman Catholic youth camp in 1961 whilst a seminarian. Pell denied the accusations and stood aside while the inquiry continued. The complainant agreed to pursue his allegations through the church's own process for dealing with allegations of sexual misconduct, the National Committee for Professional Standards.
Retired Victorian Supreme Court Justice Alex Southwell, appointed commissioner by the church to investigate the matter, found that the complainant gave the impression of speaking honestly from actual recollection. Southwell concluded, however, that notwithstanding this impression, he could not regard the complaint as established. In the end, and notwithstanding that impression of the complainant, bearing in mind the forensic difficulties of the defense occasioned by very long delay, some valid criticism of the complainant's credibility, the lack of corroborative evidence and the sworn denial of the respondent, I find I am not satisfied that the complaint has been established. Pell claimed to have been exonerated, while the complainant's solicitor said his client had been vindicated. On February 20, 2016, the Herald Sun newspaper reported that Pell had been under investigation for the past year by detectives from the Victoria Police Sano Task Force over sexual abuse allegations involving between 5 and 10 boys that occurred between 1978 and 2001 when he was a priest in Ballarat and when Archbishop of Melbourne. His office issued a public statement denying the allegations calling them utterly false and asked for an inquiry into the leaking of information by Victoria Police officers to the media. Victoria Police remained silent on whether Pell was being investigated. The Sano Task Force was established in 2012 to investigate allegations arising from the Victorian government inquiry into the handling of child abuse by religious and other organizations and the subsequent Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse. On July 28, 2016, the Chief Commissioner of Victoria Police, Graham Ashton, confirmed that there was an investigation into alleged child sexual abuse by Pell following a report by the ABC's 7.30 program the previous day and stated that he was awaiting advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions. On August 17, 2016, Victoria Police confirmed a response had been received from the DPP, but would not disclose the DPP's recommendations. In October 2016, three Victoria police officers from the Sano Task Force flew to Rome to interview Pell, who voluntarily participated, regarding allegations of sexual assault. In February 2017, Victoria Police advised that the brief of evidence against Pell for sexual assault allegations had been returned to the Office of Public Prosecutions for review with advice subsequently provided to Victoria Police in May 2017. On June 29, 2017, Victoria Police charged Pell with sexual assault offences with several counts and several victims. He was summoned to appear in the Magistrates' Court of Victoria on July 26, 2017. In a press conference, Pell stated that he would return to Australia and that I'm looking forward, finally, to having my day in court and I'm innocent of those charges. They are false. On July 26, 2017, Whilst not required to attend in person, he appeared in the Melbourne Magistrates' Court for a filing hearing represented by Barrister Robert Richter QC and, although not required at this stage of the court committal process, he entered a plea of not guilty. An application by the media seeking the public disclosure of the details of the charges was refused by the magistrate. The hearing was adjourned to October 6, 2017 whilst Victoria Police finalised providing the brief of evidence to him. On October 6, 2017, whilst not required to attend in person, he appeared at the Melbourne Magistrates' Court for a committal mention hearing. The committal hearing, which will determine whether there is enough evidence to commit him to stand trial, 
was listed by the court to commence on March 5, 2018. The committal hearing will allow for approximately 50 witnesses to give evidence, including former choir boys. The magistrate will allow Pell's barrister Robert Richter QC to cross-examine all but five witnesses. As a result, the hearing has been scheduled to allow for four weeks of testimony and cross-examination. Pell's barrister said the matter would go to trial and that some of the allegations, those involving St. Patrick's Cathedral, were impossible. At a procedural hearing on November 22, 2017, Pell's lawyers requested documents from ABC journalist Louise Milligan and Melbourne University Press relating to a book named Cardinal, The Rise and Fall of George Pell which was published in early 2017. In January 2018, a man who had accused Pell of sexual abuse died after a long illness. Nicholas Papa's QC stated that this would affect the structure of Pell's court case, and stated that in a case of historical sexual abuse it can seriously affect the case due to a lack of witnesses. That charge was withdrawn on the Friday before the committal hearing was due to begin. Pell's lawyers have requested and been denied the personal medical information of the complainants. Pell's defense has been reported to be based on questioning the timing of allegations. Pell has written widely in religious and secular magazines, learned journals, and newspapers in Australia and overseas. He regularly speaks on television and radio. His other publications include The Sisters of St. Joseph in Swan Hill 1922A Euro 72, Catholicism in Australia, Rerum Novarum A Euro 100 Years Later, Catholicism and the Architecture of Freedom.